Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch League Report. I'm Brian. I'm Ben. And Ben, how are you? Uh, I'm doing fine, given uh, given that the uprising lost. Hey, you know, you win some, you lose some. Unfortunately, next week doesn't look great for the uprising in terms of their opponents, but uh, f- we'll deal, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Because we're talking about what happened in week two of stage number two. And Ben, what stood out to you most? Uh, well, there's a couple of different uh, headlines we can talk about, but I think the biggest one is probably that the, uh, the Valiant won a game. I, finally. Yeah. They won a game, and I'm sure now that they're they're off the schneid, as it were, um, people probably rank them above Washington and Florida, who have previously won games. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I mean, especially looking at their second match like i mean the, the first match of the week they barely beat uh atlanta who mm-hmm. have been struggling significantly this stage mm-hmm. uh but in their second match they actually had a relatively close match against the gladiators right. who are, i think top five team right now in terms of uh in terms of rankings so uh yeah that's a really good indicator for them kind of bouncing back a little bit this stage mm-hmm. uh obviously it's not you know the most uh, intense bounce back ever because they've still only won one match. Mm. Um, but they have a relatively easy week comparatively next week, so maybe they can uh, get some kind of momentum rolling here. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I think definitely, yeah, Atlanta has struggled. There's no doubt about that without Defran. I think, was this their first win this week against the Justice without yes, Defran? Well, yeah. And I think, as we just said, the Justice, they're not very good. Love them, obviously. And they're beat writer for the Game House. You guys can check that out. Um, but I'm not going to also sit here and lie to you guys, because I think, you know, if you're watching this show, you, you trust our opinions somewhat. The Justice are really bad. And Atlanta beating them isn't the best thing. But you know what? It would have been a lot worse had they lost to the Justice, right? I mean, yeah, it would have been uh, it would have been a pretty bad look for Atlanta for them to lose to the Justice. It was already a bad enough look for them to lose to uh, the Valiant. Ooh, that would have been uh, a brutal weekend. Oh, yeah, that would have. Now uh, that you're putting it like laying it out there, oh my god. That would have basically killed their their chances of just being taken seriously mm-hmm. at least for the rest of the stage. They would have had um, to just not be a team anymore. They would have had to just disband. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you mentioned that the Justice are probably uh, one of, if not the bottom ranked team, mm. and I know that you know. Yeah, we'll go with me. one of it, Ben. I mean, I'll I'll you know, come out and say I think that the Justice are the worst team in the Oof, league. Brutal. Um, and I thought that preseason, mm. which is why when we did our preseason rankings, I put them last. Right. Um, and uh, you know, but it's definitely like Florida and the Justice are are uh, definitely in a really neck neck battle. <laughs> A race to the uh, bottom. bottom. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, Florida didn't play that well. And I think the most damning Mm -hmm. thing about them is like a lot of the times, I don't know if they're doing this to be trolly, but the announcers are saying, oh, it seems like a miscommunication there. (laughs) Which which I would be saying it to be trolly, but I think it's actually legit considering um, certain times where the, well, like Nano, somebody who's just trying to like, you know, stay alive or... They just, they just do weird things. They're just not a good team. They get nanoed on Primal Rage and fall off the map. Let's, let's say that. You know, let's be fair. Uh, he was uh, he was slept. He was slept. Nano, so. He was slept. So but yeah, not a good look. I mean, yeah. What can you do, Jonak? He's uh, obviously an amazing player versus a team that's uh, not. Not that good, but maybe they'll find their footing. Speaking of not very good, Ben, how many maps have the charge lost in a row at this point? Uh, I believe that's 23 in a row. Holy crap. Going all the way back to week four of last stage. They, that was the last time they won a map. It was almost a month ago at this point. So what what happened here, Ben? They were not um, – admittedly, they weren't, like, amazing. They weren't blowing the doors off anybody. However, they were like a decent middle of the road team, and then all of a sudden they just weren't. What is the biggest factor in their downfall and their map losing streak that has gotten pretty impressive at this point? Yeah, it's really strange because I think that 
uh, like you said, they are they should be at, at the very least like a middle of the road team, like uh, somewhere in the nine to twelve rank uh, area, but. Their performance has definitely put them down in the gutters with the likes of um, the likes of the mayhem and the justice and the valiant and now the rain and now as we might talk about a little bit the defiant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's been uh, really kind of strange because they have a lot of great individual talent. Uh, there is some weirdness in the way they set their lineups uh versus like putting in eileen over kia but i think a lot of that just comes down to um to the map and what their strategy is coming in uh i think they just need like this is kind of an issue we saw last year with the dragons Mm. to an even greater extent um where there was pieces of individual talent on the team Mm -hmm. um like I mentioned, I think that Eileen is a is a great uh, player on the team. And for instance, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Shu as well. There's a lot of there's a lot of pieces that that should make this team work, um, but they're just not working together the way you know these other top tier teams are working together. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we keep on talking about. Uh, goats getting played more this week than it was last week, mm. unfortunately. I know we're uh, backsliding is, here. This is not what we wanted. Yeah, there is still a lot of focus uh, on um, on team based, uh, like on teamwork being uh, a higher priority in terms of success over individual talent. Mm. Yeah, and so you see the teams that have both doing really, really well, mm. but the teams that have teamwork but uh lower level talent uh like you know for instance i think the the boston uprising mm-hmm. i think that you know they're obviously our strong players on that right. team uh but the reason that they're succeeding is because they have a uh, really good cohesion mm-hmm. uh, i think that that's something that the charge uh have lacked at the very least in uh, in recent matches they played mm-hmm. yeah no i think there's a really good point i think especially noticing watching justice more this stage um because i have to write about them these teams don't have someone on the level of fusions being like their leader making sure everyone knows what's happening on the map where to go what to do next and i think because he's so good at that it really does elevate a team like boston you know above where like maybe their talent level is and like you said it it makes them a better cohesive unit um Speaking of backsliding from Goats meta, can we talk about the Houston and the um, Vancouver match? Yeah, we can talk about just Vancouver in general. I All think right, let's, this, yeah, let's uh, talk about week. Vancouver in general. Yeah, I think that this week Vancouver definitely showed uh, some chinks in the armor. Mm-hmm. I mean, they def- they did both win both their matches against Seoul and against Houston, right. but um, they, you know, in, in the... Um, uh, the semifinals of the playoffs, they just destroyed Seoul. Like they they basically like took Seoul's heart and just like crushed it into a million pieces. Yeah, like yeah, that was pretty brutal. Um, and yeah, if I think that the match that they played against Seoul this week, they looked human. Like they looked like there was a potential for them to to not perform uh, at the same level as they have been. And then again on uh, uh, against Houston, the map one, uh, Houston just destroyed them. Yeah, uh, and it was it was honestly really shocking to yeah. see Houston, who have been like a, a middle of the road, if not like a low tier team, mm-hmm. uh, for the most part, who have kind of had issues of their own, kind of figuring out their their uh, primary roster mm-hmm. and figuring out kind of what they want to do and have some kind of cohesion, and to see them just like annihilate um uh vancouver on it was uh busan right uh yes yes it was yeah um yeah no i mean i think they even said it like i think maybe some of the houston players said it that vancouver they just didn't know what to do they didn't know how to like counter the dps meta that the um outlaws were playing and it was very exciting in Twitter and our group chat, and everybody was losing their minds for one game. Yeah, and for one, <laughs> for exactly one map, and yeah. then uh, and then Vancouver picked it up after uh, Houston 
for some reason decided to play into the goat's mirror. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what you want to do, right? You want to play the team that's shown they're the best at this like meta. It's like let's let's play it on their turf. Mm-hmm. So that was disappointing. That makes sense to me. It was exciting, but then very disappointing. And I don't know what to think. I I would love if Houston continues to try out playing these DPS metas, and I would. I would wager a guess, and obviously anything can happen, but like you said, there, there are some flaws in Vancouver's game. I would imagine sooner than later they will finally get beaten by somebody. Somebody will figure out, you know, how to play them, and they will finally lose, and they'll probably still be a very good team and probably still win the playoffs this stage, but uh, I think I think their time's coming to lose. I don't know if you co sign that. Um, there's, it definitely looks like there's, uh, more of a potential now than like two weeks ago, I mm-hmm. would have been very, uh, tentative to say that Vancouver could lose or maybe right, right after they, uh, they won the stage one, mm-hmm. uh, finals, like that team looked, unstoppable. you know, yeah. o- almost unstoppable. Like the shock gave them a run for their money, mm-hmm. but they still were able to pull it out. Right, the shock playing like one. the game of their lives, and they yeah. still lost. And that felt like the closest that any team was going to get to beating them. Mm. But I mean, they they've looked, uh, they've looked beatable, at least starting this week. And so we'll see where they go from here. If they pick it back up, and you know, when, uh, you know, don't drop any more maps against uh, lower tier teams. Um, mm. But we'll see. I think that there, there's a lot of intrigue there as to whether this. Uh, the squad can keep it up <laughs> all right so moving on to them who would you like to talk about next yeah no i alluded to it earlier i think that uh something that's come out of this week is that toronto defiant are now uh i believe fourth to last in the stage mm-hmm. uh rankings and they've dropped significantly out of the uh the overall rankings i believe they were like ninth or tenth mm-hmm. when they had previously been a top three to five team for pretty much right. the entirety of stage one so I think that that's uh, their their kind of fall from grace here. They lost to Philly and they got swept by uh, Dallas. You know, it's not really like a, a great look. I mean, Dallas has looked really strong. Mm-hmm. Note especially has looked great. We, we can talk about after as well. But yeah, uh, yeah the the def- yeah exactly. Uh, the the defiant have not been uh, been. You know, looking super great ever since they were uh, they were reverse swept by by the uprising. Yeah, no, I think it I think it is a mentally like tough thing to be reverse swept in Overwatch. I think it does take a little bit out of you, and it takes a little bit of like mental toughness to get back to being like, ah, oh, it's fine. We'll, you know, we'll move mm-hmm. on and we'll recover. And who knows? Maybe maybe Toronto's just had a really easy strength of schedule in stage one i mean that's something we certainly speculated on going into the stage one playoffs yeah definitely and then also coming into this week when we talked about uh the toronto versus philly matchup Mm. where both teams uh were kind of talked about as being a little bit uh overrated Mm. over uh hyped as far as their position within the standings goes compared to where they might actually fall as far as uh, like an overall ranking mm-hmm. because of their schedules. Um, but yeah, I think that the Defiant, yeah, they just haven't looked like they did in uh, their height in stage one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have I'm 37 coming in, uh, replacing Stellar, who is retired, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I'm 37 alone has looked really strong, but there's issues as far as him being uh like ingratiated within the team chemistry mm-hmm. i think uh that might you know work themselves out in the next week or two but they got to figure something out quick because again the season is short like mm-hmm. uh, in, in terms of time it's long but in terms of in terms of matches there's only 28 matches mm-hmm. you can't be dropping you know three matches just to try and figure stuff out yeah and i mean they were it's definitely a difficult position to have someone retire after only one stage yeah. and to pull someone up who rose so quickly through the ranks like i'm 37 so they might just have to call this uh stage a wash and hope that things kind of shake out a little better for them in stage three yep. similar to uh atlanta who had mm-hmm. uh 
an important player retire and they had to kind of like piece together a uh, uh, replacement mm-hmm. in uh, very little time. Yeah, and similar story, also reverse swept. Also reverse swept. Just add insult to injury. Also, yep. <laughs> so, also collapsed. Right. So kind of on the opposite end of that, you just talked about them a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the fuel. Yeah, so we have the fuel coming in, playing their first matches of the stage because they had uh, week one off, mm. and uh, it looked real strong. Yes, they looked uh, great. You know, the, the Paris match was a little bit closer, um, but, you know, the 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 this this roster just feels good. Mm. Like, we see Note uh, really playing these different heroes. Yeah, he's been put on uh, Arisa duty and all of these bunker comps while, um, while uh, OGE is playing Winston. Mm. And, um, yeah, he's looked really strong. He's looked, he's played some Tracer. He's played some uh, Hanzo. He's been actually really doing a good job of flexing uh so i think that um i think that dallas has got their uh their money's worth this trade honestly Mm -hmm. um and especially because they have akm who can play the sombra they don't really need rck uh, RCK. yeah i think it's a trade that in retrospect makes a lot of sense for both teams it's probably one of the Mm -hmm. one of the rare times you're like yeah both teams got what they needed from this trade and obviously we're really happy for note we like note a lot and want to see him succeed so you know good for dallas um good for jane i'm sure i'm sure we'll be hearing about it and also they had a little bit of uh turmoil going on as i'm sure you saw a little bit of twitter drama with uh it was a halo of thoughts putting out some unsubstantiated reports on dallas and kind of sending them into a bit of a tailspin so it's good that they were able to kind of put all that aside and look very good in their first action of stage two yeah a lot of drama getting dragged in but the end the organization as a whole and talking about uh their role or lack thereof in uh leaking information about the uh the asking fusions fate ksf trade uh that didn't end up happening so mm. which honestly yeah. thank you guys if you did do that <laughs> I mean, it sucks for asking a lot, and we feel bad yeah. for him. But uh, I'm glad the Boston kept Fusions. Yeah, Fusions is uh, is really strong as a shot caller, as a leader, as a as just like a confident presence, and you know, good uh, you know person to uh, to really build a team around. So it's nice that we've kept them. Uh, but you know, I mean, Fade has looked better. If we're talking about the the Valiant looking better, Fade mm-hmm. has looked better. They rotated ksf into the lineup i think that's one of the big reasons that they've been looking better is they've changed their lineup right. around they've brought in ksf and custa and uh kind of you know had had a had a lineup being fielded that makes a little bit more sense mm-hmm. uh <laughs> all right. so all right so what else yeah. do we want to cover before we wrap this show up um, I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to talk about from this week? Or you want to talk about some uh, some preview for next week? Um, well, I'll just say that uh, watching New York play the two bottom tier teams was uh, very awful. If you're rooting for either of those teams, <laughs> they rolled them. It was not close. It was it was awful. They won both 4-0. And man, New York outside of the playoffs, great team. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna see them uh, play some harder opponents next week, which is well, nice. We we're see them. <laughs> well, the first matchup yeah. is against the uh, the Fusion, mm-hmm. and as we've heard from the casters, that's historically uh, a rough matchup for New York. Even yeah, though, we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Well, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll be rooting for them, obviously. All right. Yeah. yeah no, that's all I wanted to say was that. Uh, wow, the Justice and the Mayhem got rolled by NYXO. As expected. As expected. And all is right in the world <laughs> of Overwatch. Yeah. And uh, it's been fun to watch, certainly. Ben, do you have anything you want to say before we sign off? And if not, where can they find you? No, I'm just uh, excited for next week. I'm excited to see what happens the week after with this Dallas Homestead thing. See some games happening. In yeah, the right, right now there's some weird stuff happening on the website. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's just a bug yeah. uh, that'll get fixed. But yeah, yeah, right now the the um, the display on the Overwatch League website and app and everything says that 
all of the matches on Saturday and Sunday of the Dallas Homestead will be taking place at uh, 3 a.m. Uh, Eastern, which is midnight PST, and so all the mm-hmm. times are technically written in PST and, right. uh, under the hood. So my assumption is just that those times haven't been filled in yet, and so they're defaulting to midnight PST. <laughs> They're not. Well, they're we'll not going to be at three a.m. That would be yeah. crazy, and all so. at the same time, very odd. But hey, um, if that happens, I guess we'll cover it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find we'll find a way. Ben, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Ben Sharon. Uh, gonna, I've been tweeting a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, okay, I think I feel like you said that every week. So I say. I'll, I've been tweeting more than I have previously, but it's like one more tweet than I, right? Like, you right. know, one week, one week I'll do three tweets and next week I'll do four. And so, yeah. Makes sense. You can find me at the fake B Mar. That's M A R R. You can find the channel on Twitter at WG everything on Instagram at wicked get everything. Of course on YouTube at youtube.com slash wicked good everything. And on Twitch at twitch.tv slash wicked good everything. Ben, did I forget anything? Uh, I don't think so, but you know, might have. I'm, uh, I, I'm the wrong person to ask. We got, we got a lot of things going on in a lot of places. And yeah. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Later on in the week, we will be having a new episode of the Itch.io show, as well as next week, Ben, Alex, and I played a little bit of Splitgate, and um, it went really well, and you're definitely going to want to check those highlights out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. And if you really really liked it uh hit the bell icon i'm told it does stuff though i've hit many bell icons and i've never gotten any push notifications so who knows if that's true in the comments down below uh let us know how many maps you think the charge are gonna lose in a row ben what is your official guess for that um well they have some easier matchups coming up so i'm hoping they can at least win a map this uh week so if we're at 23 now let's say let's say 25 25 I mean, all right I'll, let's see what they are. yeah i don't know i don't even know which which order they're playing their matches they're playing the spark first so maybe maybe it'll be a little harder right uh, all right in that case i will go 27 so we got a small margin yeah. of error there it's gonna be 26 and neither of us are gonna be right yeah all right guys thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day